I'm John Skinner and this supports my book Striper Pursuit and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. The lure I'm using in this video is called the spoon jig that's at the bottom. Uh, right above that is a diamond jig followed by four real sand eels and a couple of tsunami sand eels. There's a side view of the spoon jig. You can see it's got a little bit of a curve to it. And here's a quick look at the retrieve. And, and the retrieve's a, a little bit fast um, because I'm in shallower water. And I'm just trying to keep the tin up just a little bit off the bottom. And um, that's just the, the right retrieve for these conditions. So I've just arrived on the beach and uh, I've picked out a nice looking sandbar out there. You can see a little bit of white water breaking on it. And uh, I'm casting a little bit over that white water and then working it off the bar edge. In the book Striper Pursuit, I write a lot about structure and how to read the bars and different breaks in the bars and you know, how to pick basically a spot to start fishing and uh, how to work along the structure in order to find the fish. And there's a, a quick hookup. The nice thing about tins is that they're very versatile lures. Uh, you can vary the retrieve and uh, there are different uh, size and profile tins and uh, a lot of times uh, the probably the most common tin that you'll see on the beach are the, the straight diamond jigs and they work very well. Uh, I prefer something with a little more shape to it, something that uh, has a little more action and that's why I often use uh, spoon jigs in conditions like this. You know, This is fairly calm and I want a little bit of action on the jig and the spoon jig works very well. Unfortunately, spoon jigs aren't that easy to find in tackle shops. Um, they've actually been around since around the 1970s. If you Google terminal tackle and spoon jig, um, you'll definitely come upon them. But there's plenty of other tins on the market that work just fine. The, the key things are um, yeah, when do you start your retrieve? Do you let the jig settle first to the bottom? Do you start the retrieve as soon as it hits the water? Um, how fast do you retrieve the jig? Do you have some tip action? Do you impart some action on it? You know, those are three variables right there that are very important. And uh, you know, there's no right answer. It depends on the conditions. It depends what the fish want that particular day. As so you can see, I'm on a, a very empty beach here. There's, uh, fishing's been kind of slow and there's not uh, too many guys trying. Um, there were a few people around, but I just picked a spot uh, out in the middle of nowhere based on uh, the bar and the white water action that I saw, and uh, it paid off right away. So I need a fish for the dinner table, so this one's going home. And there's a look at the stomach contents, sand eels and some crabs. In this case I'm starting to retrieve uh, very soon after the lure hits the water and uh, you saw the retrieve speed and you know this has to do with the fact that I'm probably casting into you know, maybe six feet of water at most so it's relatively shallow. So that first fish came uh, way out by the bar, but this one's going to be along what's called the beach lip, very close, right behind that first wave, and uh, that's where that fish was. So it's really important to work that lure carefully all the way back and pay special attention to that area called the beach lip right behind that where the wave breaks. Tins are often a good choice in bright daylight. Uh, that little flash that they give does a good job of attracting fish. But they work uh, well down into low light as well. And uh, if you watch the video all the way through, you'll uh, get to see that. And um, you know, some anglers will even use them at night with uh, pretty good success as well.
So that was a really soft hit. Uh, yeah, it felt just like a little bit of weight on the tip, and you know, when you feel something like that, you know, try to set the hook, and uh, in this case it paid off with the fish. Spoon jigs come in three sizes. Uh, the number one is a one ounce, this is the number two, it's an ounce and a half, and the number three is two and a quarter ounces. This rod is a 9-foot custom lama glass. It's uh, built on a 10-foot lama glass GSB 121L blank with one foot cut from the butt. The reel is a Van Stall 200. It's spooled with 30-pound test spider wire stealth braid. At the end of the braid, there's a 3-foot liter of 50-pound test fluorocarbon with a high quality barrel swivel on one end and a 75 pound tactical angler's clip on the other where the lure attaches. Now this is one very fat striper. Okay, I'm done narrating. Uh, there's a couple of more fish left, and if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my channel, and if you want to learn more about striper fishing, please check out my book, Striper Pursuit.